And you guys don't have to write anything on it. Um, if something's really, really important, and you're like, oh, that really, that really hit, or that really is really important in my life, write it down. It might help you. No? All right. So, like Lou said, my name is Joe Carlo. All right. And um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give you anything physically, okay, other than those pieces of paper, but I didn't give it to you. Um, I'm not going to tell you to think a certain way. I'm not going to push you this way. I'm not going to do anything. I just want you guys to listen. That's it. Okay? So, very quick. My name is John Carlo. It's spelled like this, okay? Well, some of you guys were thinking J-O-H-N, right? Like it's, it's Juan. It's Juan Carlos, right? <laughs> I heard that. Or Gina. Who's Gina Carlo here? And I'm like, here? Okay. Jay Quellen, right? Jay Quellen. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Some of you guys are like, he's, he's not old enough to understand me. So, G-I-A-N-C-A-R-L-O. Okay. What kind of, what does that sound? What kind of like? Italian, yeah. I'm not Italian. Um, <laughs> what else? What does it sound like? Hispanic. I am Hispanic. Okay. Take it easy on this one. All right. What kind of Hispanic? From Hispania. <laughs> I got that one. I was like, oh, you shouldn't be here. Um, so again, very, very. There's a lot of humor gonna go on. Okay. If you guys are the only, you're the only one that's not laughing. Just laugh, and then it, you know, a lot less weird. Okay. Um, from where? Ecuador. Yeah. I'm not Ecuadorian. Where else? Huh? Yeah, Peruvian. All right. I am Peruvian. I was born there. Yeah. What? Which is where my parents were. Um, so I was Peruvian. Um, well, I was. I was Peruvian until a year ago. So I I was born there. Some of it's gonna be humorous. Some of it's like, wow. Okay. Some of it you can relate to. And that's where everything gets quiet, right? So I was born there. Two years old. My dad just said, eh, this is kind of too hard, you know? Wait, two, two older girls, and now it's like a boy? It's too hard for me. Let me, uh, this was our house, let me do this. And I was like, hmm? okay. So, I don't want any participation on this one, okay? Decides to leave my mom. Mom has three kids, what does she do? She goes, either I can rely on one of them to be a professional soccer player to provide for me, or go where? America. America, right? That's where everybody's successful, right? <laughs> That's where everybody's successful. So, boom, I was born in a different country, so I wasn't a U.S. citizen. So, yes, I have the smallpox all that to, to prove that. <laughs> so, I wasn't born here. No, let's just say no English. Okay? So, another one. Dad left. Mom came in. Three kids. Okay? I'm not going to tell you how we came in. Oh. Okay? But, I'm just kidding. It was not But, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, but she got all three of us through, and um, and she said, "Where do I, what do I do now?" So, grew up, grew up, grew up without a dad. Okay, so I was like, "Wait, something's missing." You know, I just want to like go outside and be like, "Is somebody to tell me like, hey, you want to go play ball?" Like, kind of missed it. So, I grew up in there's a thing called poverty. Okay? And when you guys saw me, you guys were like, eh, this guy's probably into some type of wrestling or something, you know? And he probably had it all growing up, you know? He looks happy. That means no problems, no issues there, right? As you can see, they're piling, right? So, poverty. So poor, three kids. The only 
time, the only time we could afford anything, okay, especially was rent, was when the landlord came in to kick us out, and then my mom was like, let's go, hurry up, hurry up, they're coming. Ran to another place, and we lived there. And then we ran, lived somewhere else. And we, we lived in a, a place which, first of all, I just want to explain, where you are doesn't determine who you are. Just want to throw that out, okay? So, I went to a place called Patterson, okay? Let me guys know it. Now, went into the, um, it was a really, really uh, rough area, okay? But I was comfortable there. I was comfortable. Comfortable, comfortable. Then, my friends came into the mix. They didn't have a dad, so they said, hey, you want to make a couple bucks? I was like, yeah, how? Okay. Now, just be careful with the cops, okay? I was like, okay. I wasn't scared of the cops. I was scared of my mom. <laughs> if you're Hispanic, you know. Don't worry about the cops. You're gonna say, take me back, take me, please, please, don't get this up, don't get this up. Because when, especially, did your mom ever tell you this, Hispanic people? When she looked at you, she said, wait till we get home. <laughs> and, you're like, and you're praying, you grab your rosary bead at the time. I was like, grab the rosary bead. I was a priest. By the time I came from there to the car, I already had the collar. It grew. I don't know how. I was just like, I was like, you know, the smoke. So I was a priest by the time we got to the car. And then, so I had to learn quick. And every time we were doing something, okay, doing something to get into a car, okay? And my friends were like, come on, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, mm -mm, I'm all right, man. You know, they're like, cops are gonna come. I don't care about the cops, I don't care about my mom. <laughs> so I kind of avoided a couple things, but I kept hanging with the wrong guys, wrong guys, wrong guys. So um, if you guys say, he, he doesn't know where I'm coming from, okay? Uh, I was hanging around with the wrong guys. Okay, so if you can relate, he, uh, he kind of knows what he's talking about. Okay, so a couple, 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 couple years just hanging out with the wrong people. Okay, I needed that what? What do you think I needed? That role model, that dad, right? Okay, so then I just kept growing up, kept growing up, and my uncle, he was this like big bellied Peruvian guy who just drank all the time, who like, you can just punch his stomach and you can just break your wrist, you know? That's how, you know, it's like that weird, like, thing about it, it's like, firm. The only time he had a six pack was like, when you put like, the, the, the sticker on it, and he's like, no, he's six pack, poppy, you know? Um, so, then after that, he was the one, who was kind of like, raising me, but he told me, he was like, hey, real men don't cry, you know? So I was, now, now something new came into my life. I was like, okay, don't let your guard down, right? Mm. Can't show feelings. Man, I'm, a, I'm on a streak over here, huh? I'm doing good. So, no, sorry, you try to write this way, huh? No feelings, okay? So, you know what I mean, all right? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm doing. All right, so. No feelings. Then after that, again, if I go over time, please let me just go. All right. Um, then after that, he said no feelings. But he told me something very, very important. He saved up at the time. Leather jackets were like the cool stuff. In the old days, you know, you get yourself a leather jacket, you know, you're made. All right. He saved up for a year. I watched him every day coming home. And he's like, Bobby, Bobby, I'm getting that leather jacket. Not leather, leather. I'm getting the letter jacket, Bobby. I'm coming, he's coming. And he used to like put his money in so you know a jar. Every day put it in there. Finally, after a year, imagine saving a year. When I was young, I couldn't even save for like two days. You know, I got three dollars and I spent five, you know? I found a way. So then after that, I he showed me one thing that he didn't mean to show me, but it just changed my life. We're walking in Patterson, okay? First I lived in East 13th, then uh, between 4th and 5th Ave, then I lived in 21st, you know, or, you know, you know. <laughs> then I was walking, I was walking, 
and he finally got his leather jacket. He just opened it up, he was like, oh. Felt like a million bucks, he was walking with me, and he was <laughs> looking around, he was proud. And I looked at him, I was like, that's what it, that's what it looks to, you know, to, to get something you want, all right? And then he saw a guy shivering. They didn't ask for one dollar, they didn't ask for any help, they didn't ask for anything. But you can see, no, sh no shoes, nothing on him. He was like, shaking, shaking. He didn't look at the man, he didn't look at me, so then he didn't look at anybody saying, watch what I do next. All he did, he just saw him in his peripherals without even thinking, without saying, mm. you know that feeling where you're like, come on. He didn't do that. He just saw the peripherals, he took off his leather jacket and put it on the man. And I was like, what just happened there? What just happened there? And he goes, let's go. I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> so you're supposed to spend all your money, save, put it, and then if I give it to somebody else? I was like, so now I'm confused. I'm, I'm already confused, but this is getting, getting weird, right? Bear with me now. So that same uncle, we got a laughing stock every time I draw. <laughs> so my uncle was a, a Navy SEAL. He told me since I was young, that's why he said men don't cry. He was an old SEAL, you know? And it's not the, uh, you know? I know some of you guys are like, he was an animal? <laughs> so, how can animals wear a leather jacket? So, he told me, Bobby, you're going to be a SEAL, a Navy SEAL. You're going to be a Navy Every single day he told me. And guess what? When I was 18 years old, I was like, guess what time it is? Time to be a Navy SEAL. So I went to Patterson, off the recruiting office, and the guy, it was at that time where they can recruit anybody, you know? You came in like this and you're like, I want to go to fight. And they're like, come on in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm lying. <laughs> so I came in. I was, I was young. And I, actually, I was like, sorry, 17. And I said, I want to be a Navy SEAL. I want to be a Navy SEAL. I'm shaking. I'm like this because that guy's intimidating. He comes looks over me, and I'm like, I'm going to die. <laughs> and of course, you know, I get into my Patterson position, and I go, come on, man, let's go, sir. And he looks at me, he goes, you want to you wanna be a SEAL? He goes, all right. Sign this piece of paper. And then I was like, all right. He never asked me why. He never asked me, are you able to do this? He never asked me, do you have the proper papers to get in. Mm. So, there I am. The skinniest Hispanic in SEAL history. The only one shaking in the morning because he didn't have enough body fat on him. We had these yoke dudes and I was like this. Everybody thought it was the flags going up and the metal bouncing. It was my knees. <laughs> so, after that, I said, you know what? Let me get a little bit bigger. Let me, okay, let me, I'm gonna, this is the first thing nobody's gonna stop me from getting, right? I'm gonna get this now. I went through drown proving. They tie your hands behind your back, tie your, your, your legs, and they throw you in a 10 foot pool and say, good luck. I know that. And you have to sink all the way down. If you freak out and you start moving, guess what? You're gonna float. And the guy goes, you failed. Get out of here. <laughs> so you have to you have to sink, calm your heart, sink, push all the way up, take the biggest breath when you get there, <gasps> and calm your heart again, even though you know you're gonna go ten feet down again. Oh, you can swim up. No, your hands are tied. So we did that, we did logs, we did everything where we slept about 15 minutes a day. Just minutes. They woke you, yeah. They woke you up. Okay, well they let you sleep and they said, okay, you guys, good job, well-deserved sleep, get some sleep. You fell asleep at 11, they wake you up at 11, 14. You start banging out things, throwing, you know, fire, whatever, anything to wake you up, shoes, guns, and after that they're like, time to wake up. And guess what you're doing? You're getting up. Then you start doing it all over for a couple months. So, guess what? I got a week left to graduate. I made it. I was like, my mama's gonna be proud. 
She's going to have her Peruvian sticker and Navy Sun next to it. You know how Hispanic moms, you know? And I made a, uh, my, my sisters always got the honor roll. Mine was always participation award <laughs> or perfect attendance. There's no honor roll, but I was going to be a SEAL. And a week was before I graduated, and then he said, uh, John Carl, I need to see you. Well, he didn't say John Carl, he said, hey, you, I need to see you. You fill in whatever you want to you know, fill it in with. And then he says, I need to see you. And I'm like, man, I'm going to hold a flag for graduation, for being a SEAL. And I finally showed up there, and I'm like, I'm ready, Master Chief. What do you need me to do? You, I'm taking this team. Let's go. And he looks at me, and he goes, uh, you're out of the program. I was like, all right, Ashton Kutcher, where are you? I was out of the program. Then he said, you're not a US citizen. I was a resident, OK? So came in as a resident. They uh, said, thank you, but good luck. Sent me to a naval hospital. And I cleaned toilets and bathrooms for three months, OK? So I, I mean, I really did not like life. So then after that, I said, you know what, I'm done. I was just angry all the time. Then after that, I was walking by, I saw like a sharp, tough dude. I mean, and I said, she, um, what are you? And he goes, are you the one that uh, failed out of Buds? I said, I didn't fail, bro. And he goes, I know you came out of Buds because nobody calls me bro around here because they know better or they would know that I would destroy you right now. And I was like, then what are you? <coughs> He's like, I'm a marine sniper. Ooh. I was like, sorry. Um, <laughs> how can I be that? And he goes, all right, bring all your stuff, put it over here uh, tomorrow morning at 7.30. If you're one minute past, one second past, you're not in the program. I was like, you serious? Grabbed all my stuff, get ready. Time to become a sniper. Right? <laughs> Swipers. Swiper, no swipe. All right. So that's like his job right now. Like, <laughs> so then after that, I go to boot camp, Marine Corps boot camp. Okay, they treated me very, very nice. They gave me a whole bunch of meals and they didn't yell at me once. Okay, and then after that, they. <laughs> Thank you, there's one person like <laughs> Some of you guys believe it. I want to go, Marine. So then after that, they said, Who wants to be a, a hard charge? Who wants to make it? And who wants to go into the elite of the elite, the recon team? And I was like, Recon team? They go like right in the face of you know, the bad guys and they say, We are recon. And we, you know, we, we, we work with the SEALs. Okay? So then I said, I want to be the guy. So he goes, All right, how are you? Come over here. So then he said, All right. Go through this training, three months. Guess what they did for three months? They did drown proofing, log rolls, everything. And I was like, been there, done that, dude. Let's do it. And then after that, they said, who wants to be a sniper? Mm. I was like, yeah, of course, I couldn't stop. I'm like, oh, oh already there. I was like, and then he was like, you, skinny Hispanic kid, come here. <laughs> Follow him. Then after that, he said, who wants to be a medic with them? I want to be. Because the medics are the first ones there. Mm. If, if they're shooting somebody, they're going to shoot at the medic. So I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> or Call of Duty pretended or showed me the wrong thing, right? Because I was like, I just pressed X and I'm out of there, dude, you know? <laughs> so then after that, I went, went there, became a sniper, BRC. I had my wings, everything. I was just ready. Finally, time for deployment, OK? Went to a random country, a lot, I mean a lot, a lot of stuff went down there. I had a lot, a lot. I'd be here for hours. I'm gonna cut it there. There's a couple people that were hurt, and I did not know, but when I came back, my armor, okay, I took it out, and I'm like, time to put this away after seven years, okay? So I was dealing with this thing called PTSD for seven years, OCD and a lot of D's, OD's, or whatever, okay? So then after that, I grabbed it and I said, let me put it away. I didn't realize, but on my side, I had a round that hit me and it never went through. Mm -hmm. And I just touched my gear and it just broke in pieces. And I was like, 
first of all, I was like, wow, there has to be somebody up there, right? So then after that, I picked up this book that my friend gave me before deployment. I have read it a couple of times. I just didn't know like the, you know, what it meant. I was like, what is this stuff? Like, why do you, why do you run all the way before I got into a C-130, right? Big, big plane, okay? Why do you run to just give me a book? You could have just like sent me an audible or something, you know? Maybe at the time. So then he, I looked at it, I was like, what is this called? The Bible. So I was like, just, let me just read it, you know? Doesn't hurt. Before that, I had seven years where I built this fence. I was, there's a lot of alcohol, there's a lot of other stuff, and I just numbed, numbed my pain. Nobody could bother me. I was tough, right? Tough. I'm tough. I'm a sniper, right? Ain't no tougher than that, right? But I was numbing every feeling away. I didn't feel anything. Good job, right? Or was it? I was on five different antidepressants. And my psychiatrist looked at me and said, look, you don't even have PTSD or anxiety anymore. She looked at me and I was like, that. that's how many antidepressants I was on. I was on pain meds. I was on everything you could possibly, I was a medic. I knew how to get the stuff I wanted. Okay, Tylenol wasn't enough, I'm sorry. Oh, you wanted this? Sorry, I'm allergic to that. Oh, but this? Sorry, breathing problem. Uh, you know, pneumonia. Okay, then we can give you this. Oh, thank you. I knew exactly how to get it. I knew what to ask, I knew how to rate it. I knew everything to do. So, seven years, I just kept putting that defense up, 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 and then finally, all I did was just hurt myself, hurt my family, and nine guys that I deployed with, you know, I was there with them the whole time. I was tough enough to save them, right? <clears throat> tough enough to save them. Afterwards, we just dispersed. And these guys were just hurting themselves other ways. Hurting themselves other ways. Some of them didn't make it. Most of them didn't make it. Okay? And they were my closest guys. These are guys that you're sniper guys, right? <coughs> and they just didn't make it. Why? Because they weren't... Were they tough enough, really? So... I just want to ask you a quick question. If right now you're feeling, you know what? I don't need this stuff. You know? I'm tough enough. I got this. If you can hear it from, and I'm nobody, but if you can hear it from somebody who's, who's not been raised with a dad through poverty, okay? Doing a couple things. Dealt with the, the drugs. Dealt with the, the alcohol, okay? And don't tell me, oh, but those are like medicated drugs. No. I was so good that even the, the Navy neckerchief, I rolled it so tight that I almost licked the neckerchief. And I was like, oh God. and the guy was like, I know what you were doing before the Navy. So I'm going to be realistic with you guys. That's what some of you guys need. And I'm going to be that person to say, you're not alone. You're not the only person who's been through that or you're not the only person who is gonna go through that, okay? So right now, if you're thinking, I don't, I don't need this right now, you know what? All I'm doing is just doing this, okay? I came to this church, seven years of medications, people forcing me to do this, this, and that, and then they said, you're gonna get better by this. Guess what it took? Listen to this. Seven years, I was tough, man, tough. I drank, I drank so much, I didn't even know. The next morning, I was like, never doing that again. And then by 4 o'clock, I was like, is there any in the fridge? Let me just get some in case. So, I came into this church. My, my sister invited me. She said, just try it out. No pressure. <clears throat> I walked into here. I walked in here, and I, I just looked at the words. And the first words, uh, the first... Um, lyrics of the word was saying this okay and it's not word by word but just bear with me okay so it was saying something like this you don't have to fight anymore I 
I am your father. And you are free. So you're telling me, after all that I did, somebody cares enough to just do a couple things to look out for me for once? That single second, after seven years of holding on to everything, I broke down. I was a grown man crying and snot was flying out of my nose. And there is nothing to stop it. My sister was like, what is, what is that stuff coming out of your nose? It wasn't even like mucus. It wasn't even, I don't know what it was. It was like, it looked like, a, you know, those uh, water stickers. <laughs> I just kept going. They're like, yeah. So, same guy that's still alone. So, then after that, I, I felt this presence. And you can feel that same presence. You can feel that presence of somebody that you never knew was there probably, but you kind of had a feeling he was there. He is there. And his name is Jesus, all right? And he can be that same person that, that he was for me. So if you're thinking that this person, this, this God would never care to think and to, to care about me, I'm just saying that if he cared about this loser, okay, you guys are so much more important, okay? So... Lou has a, a, a couple of books and he can guide you and myself as well. We can guide you and we can just do this. And that's the best thing about it. We can guide you to understand what a relationship is with God. No more of this fooling around, no more of this, let me look at the TV to see what's cool this week. This has to stop now, right? And today is the day if you can take it from this loser at that time, okay? And I finally found my role. I finally found what I need to do, okay? And for me to be standing here after all those failures, or I thought were failures, God was just doing this. No, 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 no. And I'm like, what's going on? Why am I such a failure? No, no, you need to talk to you guys today. So if all of this led me to talk to you guys today, I'm all right with that, okay? So gentlemen, come afterwards, get my number. I'm all about action rather than talk. Some of my friends know me, very good about that. If I say I'm gonna do something, you better be sure I'm gonna do it because that military side and that honest side, <coughs> I'm gonna do it for you. If there's any time, Bro, I just had a bad day. I'm there to listen for you, to you. Everybody has a bad day. Nobody's perfect. And you're special enough to a God to accept you in his arms. Okay. So, gentlemen, come afterwards. Get my number. Ladies, we can give you another, another number. Same thing. They're amazing with, with uh, helping you wherever you want to get to. And there is no amount of sin. And there's nothing that you guys think that you guys can do to not be good enough. Because every single person is special in their own way. You hear it all the time. I just need five seconds with all eyes on me. Five seconds, that's all I'm asking. Every single one of you guys is special enough. Everyone here matters. Does that make sense? Ashley, thank you. Thank you, John. Woo! John is going to be around. He's going to be hanging out. Please talk to him. If you want to talk more, or you want to hear more, a little bit about a story, maybe you relate to something, say, I want to talk to you. And seriously, guys, males, if you want to get his number and text and talk to him, definitely do that. Ladies, there's the female youth leaders. We are always here. That's the ones you want to connect with. Any questions you have on any of this? Now, remember he said he got a book um, when he was go getting on that big cargo type plane? Is that what um, I'm not a military guy. I know I kind of fooled you guys. <laughs> you know, I know. But really, I'm more of a runner type. Um, 
So, uh, but this is this is one of those things. We have them on the back window, and this is this is cool. This is actually part of the Bible. It's the Gospel of John, and this tells you about Jesus. Tells you about hey, God actually wants to know you. There's no accent that you were here tonight. You think oh, I just showed up. No, God wanted you here for a reason. John, God put it on my heart to ask John. He's going through all different names. I'm like, just go, John. Why John? Why tonight? But I know God has you guys here in John's message for you guys tonight. So please. Talk to him. He's here. Also, on your way out, grab a Bible. Grab one now and start reading it. Um, this was really neat because there's also like teenagers have wrote their thoughts and comments. So you're like, I don't really understand what that's saying. Usually one of the comments kind of helps you along. It's really neat. It explains that to you. Um, if you have those on the windowsill, if you have it for a friend, you have it for a friend. That's good too. Um, I just want to pray with you. I, I want to give you an opportunity to pray. You heard John's story and you might say, hey, I want to start that. I, I don't know this God stuff. It's all new. God, you know, had these lyrics on a worship song that, like, on the very first time he walks in, has that very first song with those lyrics that apply directly to his life. How does that happen? I can tell you, see it over and over That's a God thing. God does stuff like that. And you're like, whoa, God. Wow, that's freaky. I have teenagers say that's freaky when that happens. Um, because God cares that much. So, God did that to him, and God wants to do that to you. He wants to make himself known to you. So I'm going to pray, and if you say, God, you know, I want you to be known, make yourself known to me, how my life will change me? I want this. I want what John has. You just pray the prayer in your head. It's that just starts the step, and then you need to seek God. You need to get in his word. You need to come to youth group. I'll tell you about that in a second. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes.